Welcome back. Well, Madeleine McCann's disappearance has become the most heavily reported missing person case in modern history. In 2007, the three-year-old vanished from her bed while her family was on holiday in Portugal. Almost nine years on and her parents, along with their PR advisor Clarence Mitchell, are continue to work tirelessly to find the answers and we're um, honoured to say that Clarence joins us now. Clarence, thanks for coming in here. Firstly, many people may not understand the need for a publicist in a situation like this. So just fill us in a little bit of what you do, what you provide. David, good morning. Um, well, your introduction uh, explained it. It's the most heavily reported case, missing child case, certainly in the modern internet era. Mm. Um, literally hundreds of interview requests for Kate and Jerry come in, have come in over the years. Um, where they feel there's benefit for the investigation and the police want them to, they'll do those interviews. But the rest of the time, you know, they've, they've got the grief of coping with the situation. It's of been course. nearly nine years. Um, but part of the message is keeping Madeline in the news, getting her, getting her image and, and the story out there as widely as possible. So I help them with that. I'm a buffer, effectively, for the media. So here I am talking to you today. How did you first get involved? Uh, I was initially a civil... I didn't know the McCanns at all. I was a civil servant in the British Cabinet Office and I was sent out as part of the consular assistance they were extended because of the scale of the media response. I was a, a former BBC reporter before that and because of my broadcast background, the British government sent me to help them. I was there for a couple of months as a civil servant and then later, when they came back to Britain, um, they had a number of people who were helping them financially, and one of those said he'd take me on full-time as their spokesman. So I then became an advocate for them, uh, almost a political role with a small p, um, discussing the case and arguing for them rather than just being a media handler. And probably never dreaming it would go on for this long. No, it could end with one phone call. Mm. Um, we've always said that, and um, we didn't know that. In fact, one of my government bosses said, oh, I'm sure you'll be on this for a fortnight and that'll mm. be it. And he here we are nine years later. Are you, you're of the opinion, aren't you, that the media really tried to spin this story, uh, story into almost like a soap opera? Because, uh, because of this new world media, and this sort of hit at the same time as that. So how do you keep them on track to say, look, let's not go overboard here, let's try and keep the message. First of all, be entirely straight with the media. Be mm. honest, truthful, open and as accessible as possible within reason. There are certain days and certain things that we weren't able to say because the police didn't want us to. But as long as you're straightforward with professional journalists of whatever nationality, they generally are straightforward with you, I find. So I treated it as a journalist would from the outset. In fact, some of the journalists in Portugal thought I was still there for the BBC, funnily enough. They didn't realise I'd joined the government. Um, one of the big problems was there was no information coming out from the police in Portugal. There is a law there that says it's an offence for any um, serving officer to discuss the case. So the journalists weren't getting official comment at all. But there were leaks, there were some stories coming out which were wrong, so I had to try and correct those as firmly as possible and give the journalists as much information as we could under those constraints. And as a result, we developed that relationship and trust over the years, and that still holds true today. It's, it's pretty evident Kate and Jerry McCann are remarkable people. I can't begin to imagine as parents what they've gone through. How nine years on do they hold up hope and, and what do you think they believe in their heart of hearts? They still believe that in the absence of any evidence to suggest that Madeline has come to physical harm, that there is, it's as logical to believe she might still be alive mm. as it is illogical just to assume that she, the worst may have happened to her. Lots of people have said over the years, oh, she, you know, she must have been killed and, and there's, what's the point? Well, nobody can prove that. We don't know that. Um, having been associated with the case for so long, I don't know. Um, nor do Kate and Jerry. They trust in the police. There's a British police investigation still very much un underway, Operation Grange, uh, pursuing the core leads after years of review. And um, every time they have a doubt, and they do from time to time, they're only human, uh, something happens like the girls in Cleveland, uh, of course. Uh, the, the JC Lou Dugard, Sean yeah. Hornbeck, other cases. Yeah. Yeah. And Kate will turn around and say, well, we're not wrong to have hope. So that's, that's what keeps them going. Well, we I just know. put some images up of, of how Madeline um, might look today. And um, obviously, for, for, if anyone wants more information, they can jump online to find madeline.com uh, or missingpeople.org.uk. They're very lucky to have you, Clarence. Thank you for coming in today. Thank you. Thank we you. really appreciate your time.